What's up guys, Dr. Shepard here. Today we are gonna be talking a little bit about depersonalization and derealization, or what we call it for short, DPDR, which is way easier to say. Most people have had an episode of depersonalization or derealization at some point in their lives. It's not necessarily a problem if it's something that's mild and just sort of comes and goes on its own. But for some people it can become a very distressing part of some other psychiatric disorder, such as an anxiety disorder, especially disorders like panic disorder, Order. It can also completely take on a life of its own and become its own disorder that we call derealization depersonalization disorder. As you can imagine, psychiatric disorders that are characterized by derealization and depersonalization and the derealization depersonalization disorder are much more rare than these sort of transient, mild derealization or depersonalization episodes that many people will have at some point in their life. With these disorders, we're really talking about times where the derealization and depersonalization become extremely bothersome. They can be so anxiety producing and they hang around for a really long time. And for many people that deal with this stuff, it can actually get in the way of being able to do the things you want to do and live a normal life. So why does DPDR even happen? Our brains normally do a pretty good job of integrating our experiences, our thoughts, our sensations, everything that's going on around us, inside us, into one seamless experience. When our brains are really not able to integrate all of this stuff due to a variety of potential reasons that we'll talk about in a moment, that's when DPDR can occur. So let's go into a little bit more detail. Depersonalization refers to feeling detached from yourself. So people describe it as feeling like you're a robot or you're stuck in a movie. People feel like they might be observing themselves from above or from outside of their bodies. And as you can imagine, this is a really disconcerting feeling and people can start to fear that they're going to lose control control or go crazy because of the feelings. Derealization is similar, but it refers to your experience of the world around you. They may feel like things around them are distorted, like too large, too small, closing in on them, abnormally shaped, and just in general, everything around them looks strange and unreal. Common risk factors for DPDR are things like severe stress, trauma, severe anxiety, especially anxiety disorders like panic disorder, depression, and certain substances. Some people have their first experience of DPDR after using a substance like marijuana or some sort of hallucinogen, ketamine, something like that, especially if they happen to have a bad trip. There also seems to be some sort of biological component to DPDR, and we don't fully understand the nuances of this yet, but people are definitely studying it. One thing that we have found is that people who have more difficulty expressing their emotions may be more likely to develop DPDR. And experiencing an episode of derealization and depersonalization, like I said, happens in many people. And oftentimes you will hear about this happening in very traumatic or stressful situations. So for example, if somebody's in a bad car accident, they may describe their experience as feeling out of body. They may feel like they're looking down on the accident from above as they're taking whatever action that they took at the time. And this may actually be the reason that depersonalization and derealization exists in the first place. In these kinds of situations, we don't always want our brain to be thinking through and integrating our experiences. We just want to take quick and decisive action. We want to react, not think about what's going on. And I'm sure you've heard cases where someone has taken this incredibly heroic action without even thinking twice about it, in part because they are experiencing this kind of dissociation. So DPDR is not necessarily a bad thing, but when this response becomes chronic, when it becomes bothersome, when it starts to impair someone's functioning, that's when it becomes what we would call a disorder. The really good thing is that there are ways to treat depersonalization and derealization if it becomes a problem for you. So I would really encourage you to see a therapist and or psychiatrist to start on treatment. And we will also be talking more about potential treatment options in the future. So if you aren't already, please subscribe and I will see you guys next time with more info.